Danny Salazar is the last player that we're going to talk about today. He is working his way back from shoulder injury. Surprise, surprise. That has kind of been the story of his career. So, I mean, we've seen what he can do before, Ron. Is, are you willing to stash him now that he is coming back close to playing time for the Indians? I think so because there's not really anything in the Indians rotation that's holding him back from, from getting innings, you know, with the, the troubles that they have had, you know, talking about some of the guys that are out. I, I just think you might you, you're going to get some K's there. Walks are going to be a little bit high. ERA might be a little bit high as well. But at this point, you kind of hit on, on the last point that we made. You've been looking for some starting pitching due to some injuries with Jameson Tyon with some others, you know, Corey Kluber's of the world, Carlos Carrasco's of what he's dealing with. And you definitely got to look in, in Danny Salazar's direction just because you know you're going to get the strikeouts there. You know, you're going to have to maybe – you might get a, a mid-three ZRA. You might get an ERA in round four. I, that's kind of in between. I'm not sure where that's going to really fall. But he, he's shown in the past if he's healthy, he's definitely worth having. It's just the problem is, is he going to be healthy? And anytime you mention shoulder and you mention pitcher, it's something that gives you a little bit of cause for concern. But I think just with the landscape of pitching now – where we're at in the season where you're kind of making that decision. Are you going to go for it? Or are you going to just kind of fold it and rebuild? You got to start taking chances on guys like this. And this could be a guy that who knows, he may end up being a difference maker in a, in a league that you might win. I'm going to have to completely disagree. I want nothing to do with Salazar. When was the last time he was even somewhat good, even in 2016, which is the last time he threw uh, a chunk of innings and, and pitched somewhat well, he had a three, eight, seven ERA, which is fine. Uh, pitching was a little bit better back then, so that ERA wasn't quite as good as it would be this day and age. And his whip was 1.34, so he's a whip killer. The strikeouts were solid, uh, 10.55, but maybe not elite. And then we haven't really seen much out of him since. I just don't think he's really ever going to be viable. We see injury after injury. The strikeouts are always there, but he, he's always struggled with command. And guess what? After shoulder injuries, your command suffers. So I want nothing to do with him right now. I will wait watch someone else try and deal with the struggles. And then if he has a decent enough year this year, I'll consider looking at him next year. But to be the the first line of defense here, to take a look at him right off the bat and take the risk of throwing him in your lineup, even with the state of pitching today, I want nothing to do with Danny Salazar. I'll pass and see what happens. All right, Ben, let me throw this at you then. Um, so Danny Salazar's 2017 line that was last year he pitched he missed last year with injuries so 2017 he threw 103 innings 12.67 k per nine 3.84 walks per nine 428 era peripherals were much better but whatever it was 428 era and this player has a 396 era right now through 104 and two-thirds innings 11.78 k per nine 4.64 walks per nine sounds pretty close you well, the first thing I'm going to tell you right now is you can make your point. And the second thing I'm going to say is blind resumes are the stupidest thing we do as fantasy analysts. But go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, once I tell you that it's Robbie Ray, who is a player that you really enjoyed coming into the season, I will ask you uh, why you think the blind resumes are stupid. Not that I ever use them. Like, I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who's never done that on Twitter. But why do you hate them? Okay. So how many innings did Robbie Ray pitch last year? Uh, Doesn't matter. How many innings did Danny Salazar pitch last year? None. That's right off the bat. That's why you have to look at recent history. You have to look at age. You have to look at team. You have to look at so many things that go into it. The blind resumes don't say they just go, oh, in three years, this player had this ERA and this player had that ERA. Why wouldn't you take this player over that one? Well, maybe he's player A who has the better ERA over that span is 42 years old. Maybe he's been hurt and he only pitched five innings. Blind resumes don't tell you everything you know. I hate them. They're the thing I hate the most that fantasy analysts do all the time because they act so smug about them. But they just they you don't use all your information. If I'm going to evaluate players, I'm going to look at a wide scope of things as opposed to two metrics which work in my favor. That's how I feel about that. And it's a similar deal, like I said, with Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray's pitched. Robbie Ray has shown flashes of brilliance, whereas uh, we've got Salazar, who hasn't pitched, who's been hurt. And that uh, 2017 season, he sh went back and forth between the bullpen and the rotation because if you remember early on in the rotation, he was awful. He was terrible. They sent him to the bullpen. He worked on some things. We, In fact, we talked about it on the show. We said, hey, we like Salazar coming back. He's got some good stuff. Maybe we'll see how he does. He came back in the rotation and did well. And then he got severely hurt and he hasn't pitched since. So I, I'm just eh, – I'm, I'm quite a bit wary. And I used to love Danny Salazar. Don't get me wrong. He was one of my favorite starting pitchers way back when. I thought if it all came together for him, he's going to be brilliant. And that, by all means, could still happen. I just don't want to be the one who has to deal with the crap up until he gets good. 
Totally agree with the points that you made on the blind resumes. And I was just basically saying that, and I just came up with that on the flight. Like it just hit me for some reason when I was looking at his numbers, but I, I, the state of pitching right now, if you have a starter who, you know, injury prone as he is, if you just pick up Danny Salazar for what he is expecting, who knows, whatever you get out of him, maybe you get a dozen starts out of him, whatever. Um, Just the fact that his strikeout rate is so high right now, like, Robbie Ray has a pretty mediocre ERA right now, mediocre peripherals, bad walk rate, but his strike, he just strikes out so many guys. It gives you such a huge floor that he's still a top 40 pitcher for me this year. And I think that I kind of view Danny Salazar in the same way to a you know lesser extent with the health, obviously, but um, just because the strikeout rate is going to be so nice, that even if he, you know, has sort of a mediocre ERA, maybe it's another 428 ERA. That's still a rosterable player just because you're getting so many strikeouts with him. So I haven't actually actively stashed him anywhere just because of that injury history has left me with such a, a sour taste in my mouth. But I uh, I think I am going to probably get out and do that now, thinking about this a little bit more. 